What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Stable Cyclist, where we talk about bikes, mentality, and mental health. I'm your host, JP, and this week we're going to talk with my friend, Will Stingley. Will is the founder of Gram, and we're going to talk about what exactly is Gram. We're going to talk about counseling, and you can believe that we're going to deep dive on this one about mental health. Let's get Will into the studio. Well, Will Stingley, welcome to the Stable Cycles podcast. It is really good to have you here, man. And uh, what's what's happening in Colorado today? Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. Um, I mean, look, yeah, it's kind of a cold, dreary day. Um, just kind of the grinding in the January, the month of January. Um, but yeah, it's not not too bad. The sun will be out here. How about you, Minnesota? You in, are you in Minnesota right now? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, we didn't get yeah. snow until like January 4th this year, so that was really weird. Um, but we are we have it now, and it's definitely gotten super cold since then. So happy to be inside and happy to be chatting with you today. And, and Will, you are the founder of Go For Graham, and a lot of people in the bike world, at least, are familiar with Go For Graham, or they've seen Go For Graham, but they maybe don't know what Gopher Graham is. So I guess let's start by tell us a little bit about yourself and then eventually like let's let's segue into what what is Gopher Graham? Yeah. Um it's a great question and I like to think of Gopher Graham as this sort of um you know catalyst to help people uh, improve their mental health. And I know that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people, um but that's kind of what we try to do. And it's a, it's a nonprofit based in Colorado. Um, I guess it might be good just to start with sort of the, the history and the backstory to help give context to how and what we do today and how we, you know, do try to help people. So Graham was my brother who died in 2005. Um, he was 23 years old and he kind of suffered from anxiety, depression, mental health stuff, um, you know, off and on throughout his, his life, um, actually died ultimately of a drug interaction, um, of a medication he was taking that had a fatal interaction with just an over the counter he took. So, um, always kind of a weird interesting how we look at his death and you know obviously suicide is a huge part of mental health which is um another layer of it in itself how to help people navigate that but um it's difficult to look at graham's death and you know even in the light in the lens of well suicide or not and um i guess that could be a whole other conversation but anyway i like to say, I don't like to say, but I, I look at it as, well, he died of, of, from mental health, you know, um, and mental illness and, you know, his, his brain and his life, not, um, being able to, um, really get that under wraps. So a lot of kind of what we do and what I do is, you know, would what we're doing at Gopher Graham help Graham help the other thousands, millions of people like Graham? Um, that kind of helps drive um, a lot of my thinking in in kind of our action. Um, so anyway, I guess just to kind of rein that back into the actual story, um, a few years after my brother died, um, I seemingly sort of overnight or literally over a few weeks time, like went from never really having any mental health symptoms to having pretty textbook, severe depression. Um, and you know, nearly again, a lot of things aren't black or white, but like suicide, I, I could empathize with people who are like, you know, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to live like this. Um, yeah. So being in, the trenches of that, I really had this sort of almost, you know, kind of corny moment where I was like, corny or not, but like, 
um, moment where like, I want to help people who are like this and help people in this situation because just really being in that, um, made me realize how terrible it was, um, and how awful it is. Cause even though I was privy to how my brother lived and being around a lot of other mental health with my mother and other people in my immediate family, um, there's some situations in life that are really impossible to feel unless you, unless you just have them yourself. Um, and I do think that's where a lot of the sort of stigma comes from. It's just that un misunderstanding. Um, so in my own journey in a healing journey, um, which was, you know, long and hard, I, realized a few things like how hard it was to navigate the mental health scene with cost and time and confusion. Um, I was privileged to, you know, have some cost advantages, some time advantages, but I realized like, how would anyone do this if they didn't have those privileges like me? Um, so GopherGram tries to address some of those things, like let's knock down some of those barriers. And then, also just that the main we kind of put these put people who are seeking seeking treatment on a path of see a therapist see a psychiatrist which are both great things i truly believe that they are but to me they're not enough um and one thing that especially i felt was lacking was just a community outside those four walls of a therapist um, to be able to connect with. Um, I did have family and friends and my wife I could connect with, but you know, it's, it's sometimes hard in the midst of life to always have your wife to connect with on that level or bring that up. Um, even friends or family. So and also have a community of people who are going through the same thing. You know, I started just becoming educated about mental health and realizing just the extreme prevalence of it. And I was like, why are we all just suffering alone? Like when we know there's evidence to show even just telling your story to someone or being open with someone about what you're going through helps both the listener, um, and the speaker. So I guess that's a long winded way to say, oh, and the other third element was like, man, I started, you know, working out more. I'd always been sort of active, but like running, biking mostly and realizing like that was such a core piece of the puzzle to like my mental wellness. So those three things I would say, like trying to help people navigate the system, break down barriers, create a community and make it around, um, sort of exercise, outdoor wellness. I was like, let's just try to build something around those things. And so, I mean, it happened very organically and slowly, um, just with a small group of people to, um, have some conversations with people like out on the trail or, um, just in the community and it really just resonated. And I think it goes to show that people are, while on one hand there is so much stigma left or so much stigma still on the other hand, like there's so much sort of thirst for people to actually have an outlet to be able to speak freely about their struggles, their emotional struggles, their mental health, their depression, anxiety, their suicidality. Um, so that was a very long winded answer, but, uh, and it didn't even get into everything, no, that, but that was hopefully that gives a little bit of a backstory that was of sort of, yeah, that was, that was amazing. Will. And one, one thing you and I have spoken in the past about how both of us are very open about our mental health struggles. Um, and any, anybody who is around either of us will be happy to tell you, but most people aren't like that. Most people are more guarded in how they want to share this because they feel like they're kind of living, like you said, this solo life, even though the reality is so many of us are walking this same difficult path. And so you, you focused really 
when you started go for gram on two things that you mentioned already and that's community building and then it's also outdoor rec and a lot of people tend to think of go for gram as just a bike group but it's also a running group and there's a, if you're a part of the slack on go for gram there's all kinds of activities going on all the time and why did you focus on community building and outdoor rec paired together why was that so important to you to kind of move from we can't talk about this at all to these two things are going to help move us all forward together. Yeah. I mean, I think it really was something that I was personally seeking in my treatment and navigating my own mental health. Um, and I was kind of trying to find what might be out there. And I was like, you know what, it doesn't really exist. So let's just sort of create it. Um, and again, I, I didn't really think it would even become a big thing. I didn't really think, um, of what it might be someday. I was just like, let's a few of us, you know, my good friend, Taylor Ross, both of my, um, brothers, Seth and Colin, who, um, there was four brothers, Graham, Seth, Colin, me, it was kind of those core people who were like, we'd always talked and we were pretty open about our mental health and we're like, let's sort of see if we can share this and build this. And we all believed in those same things too, like community, um, really, you know, outdoor rec. We love cycling, just happened to like it. I mean, I, I personally believe, you know, really any exercise movement is core to a core piece to, to mental wellness. Um, I just, like to mountain bike. I mean, it's fun for me. And I do think there's also the added benefit of being outside in nature. Um, there can be a kind of a social benefit as well. Um, so really it was just kind of what I thought would help me. And it turns out, you know, it, it it's the same idea has helped other people as well. Um, but I mean, yeah, there's also evidence to support that, you know, being, in a connected community can really improve your mental wellness. Um, obviously exercise movement, being out outdoors, which, you know, cycling, running all obviously support is a huge piece to, to mental wellness as well. So, um, yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question a little bit. No, 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 for sure. The, the ambassador model you have, most people, when they hear ambassadors, uh, they're going to think about like, I'm an ambassador for this country or this company. I get X product discount and I'll post about it on social media. That's not at all the model that go for Graham follows. And the model you follow is more, if you sign up to be an ambassador with us, you are going to go through this go for gram 101 class and it's all about awareness and advocacy as a ambassador for go for gram so tell us like what is go for gram 101 and who can sign up for it and like why do people why have why is obviously you don't have a product you're selling so you're not giving out a discount code to anybody but why was this such um a unique path that you took yeah um I mean, I think the idea that the, one of the problems we're trying to fix is, you know, about 68% of people are not comfortable discussing mental health with any single person, whether it's their best friend, their spouse. Um, and so many, like 70% of people never seek treatment to mental health. Uh, for, for mental health issues. And those that do average about 10 years to actually show up at a mental health professional's um, door. I, I fit both so, of those st statistics. <laughs> yeah. It took me 10 years to go like finally get help for what was going on. Not to, not to try. Yeah, and, uh, no, I mean, it, it, it's real. You know, torpedo what you're saying, but huge. like, it, it's the reality, right? Yeah. And I think that's like, it's one thing to rattle off statistics and another thing to like hear people's actual stories. Um, which is something we try to do at GoForGram too, is like highlight people's actual stories. Um, so 
really the idea was, okay, people are kind of resonating with this. I certainly try to live my life where I try to be the person people can talk to about their mental health. Um, I was like, let's just create more of those people. So really we're kind of a multi-level marketing scam for mental health advocacy. Like you be the person in your group to talk about mental health and then that's going to snowball to someone else. And then it's going to just kind of ripple through like, and that's what I've realized so much about mental health is if you can just start the conversation, if you can be the person, like it's, it's so many times going to be a beneficial thing and going to like really ripple, ripple out to other people. Um, so a lot of people, you know, would see our Jersey, see our t-shirts and like ask what's go for Graham and two things would happen. Like literally on the trail, people would be, we'd tell the story of Graham and say, it's a mental health, you know, organization. And right there, just having that again, like people would be like, you know, just really connect and be vulnerable and tell their story about themselves or their mother or their brother. It's like, and I think there is a benefit to almost being a stranger where like someone can just be like, I'm going to tell you because there's no, there's no fear of, um, this person really doing anything about it. I think that's why people feel comfortable with therapists. It's like, um, you know, it's private. So having that conversation is, is truly beneficial. You know, it can be very therapeutic for, for both people. Um, and then people were like, well, I want to be a part of this. I want to like represent go for Graham and be that person and, and just fly those colors. Um, which was awesome. And we started like, bringing in more people to the community. And then at one point there was like, well, we, we do want people to be mental health advocates. And we also want those people who are out there representing go Graham to like be a little bit educated on how to help people, uh, you know, local resources, um, what to actually do when someone's in, in crisis or not in crisis. Um, again, it's like, I kind of learned to be that person for some people. And I wanted to have that ripple effect for other people to be like, a friend calls you, or they don't know who to call because their, their brother is, um, in crisis. Maybe they'll think, oh, I'll call Will or I'll call, uh, Melissa. So let's create more of those people. And then not only call that person, but like what to do, you know, um, which if yeah. you're in crisis, you know, that, that's a really hard situation, but maybe get more on the front end. Like, how do I get therapy? Like, oh, I'll call this person who's part of go for Graham. So we would put them through this really quick course of like mental health 101, a little bit of education and a little bit of like what resources are out there. Um, because that's, I mean, that's something I really believe too. Like there's like in so many aspects, like there's so many resources out there that are available to people. Um, and it can be overwhelming to navigate that, especially when your brain is, you know, malfunctioning. So, um, that's why we put them through that little, little course to say, you're kind of a certified ambassador, um, by no means a mental health professional, but like you can help steer people in the right way. You can help steer yourself in the right way. Um, and then also creating that community where, um, we sort of digitized it and put it on, on Slack. I mean, there's a Facebook group too, um, of, Hey, you know, I'm in Colorado Springs and my sister needs a therapist and there's other people like, Oh, I've seen this person or, Oh, there's this free resource. So, um, it's kind of all those things. Th that to me is what's been most interesting being a part of the Slack group is seeing, Yes, there's posts all the time about, hey, I'm going to ride this trail in Colorado, and who wants to join me? Those are great. But the ones where I've really seen the benefit of the community that you have built or you're building, I should say, is when, you know, the mom, Jane, writes in and says, hey, my kid needs a therapist, and we live here. And sometimes the questions are even specific about, like, this is our network. Who can we go see? And they'll be like... 10 people chiming in about like 
I would recommend this person or this is who you want to go see. And that's amazing because that is the piece that's missing. And you talk so much about like we go from, you know, 67% of the country doesn't even want to talk about this topic to then we have the, the medical field where they're very experienced. But there's like no middle ground right now. And that's what scares people so much. And for you guys to, to you know, you can call yourself a mental health pyramid scheme if you want. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> but to be that to be that middle that middle ground for people to say i know more than nothing and i know enough to to push you towards where the real help is and how to get you help that is to me what is incredible about what gophergram is doing yeah that middle ground is that's a good way to put it because i think that's where i found myself too and i think that's where a lot of people find themselves is you know how it is i mean we all walk around in our lives every day and even our close friends it's like Hey, how are you doing? Oh, we're good. Okay. What are you doing tomorrow? Okay. I got to take my kids, especially we're all so busy. I mean, it is hard to, it's hard to sometimes unload on someone and be like, I am struggling. I, I understand why there's uh, a little bit of that doesn't happen any as much as it should. I mean, on the other hand, I do think people should, we have a little bit of an issue in modern culture where we have too many sort of superficial conversations um, in general. And people, even who have friends, it's not like a true connection a lot of times. And that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, of course. But, um, but anyway, I mean, that's one of the reasons sort of, I think that the mental health crisis is so big. Um, and that I, I've seen that at go for Graham too. Like I've seen just relationships and groups of people sort of blossom. And I'm like, where did you guys meet? You know? And they're like, Oh, we met at go for Graham. And I'm like, Oh, I didn't even realize that. But I think there's a, um, a different kind of vibe and culture when you are a part of go for Graham, because you know, everyone there is sort of like just more approachable to talk about mental health. Um, more approachable to talk about sort of some just more real shit. Um, so I think it really does foster those like more meaningful connections in a lot of ways. Um, and yeah, I mean, there are some people too, a lot more recently who are just like, Oh, I want to join this bike club. I've heard gopher Graham's is a good one. And then they're like, Oh, I didn't know it was a mental health organization. And it's not that they're caught off guard, but it's a really cool way to, it's a really cool flow because you have people who aren't opting into the mental health stuff. They're opting into the, the cycling more team. And it's like, Oh, maybe I need to not like look at reflect and look at my mental health. And then there's a really good chance to educate um, those people too on like what resources there are. And I've heard just a lot of stories like before I was in go for Graham, like, I really didn't know I had these issues. And since then, like, I've just been coming a little bit more aware of them, you know, whether it's serious depression or just like emotional trauma that, that everyone kind of has and goes through. So, well, and the other benefit too, Will, is you and I have talked, like I said, about the idea that we're open. We also know how to push people towards help if they need it or we know how to be good resources, but that's because we've lived it. And mm -hmm. it's not just the job of those with mental health uh, problems and disorders to be pushing everybody else towards the help they need or to be the resource, you know, the resource officer for anyone with a mental health issue. And so it's, it's good in that it's growing the group bigger so that it doesn't just include those of us who have like hit the absolute bottom and we know we've found our way back out because it's not just our job. It's everyone's job. That's, that's really why this is a crisis and has been for quite a while now in our country is that oftentimes the people with the disorders and the, and the mental health issues are the ones pointed to of saying, well, they're the resources on this. Yeah. I mean, that's really well said. And I like, I grew up in a house where, mental health was prevalent, but also open and talked about. And I think that was an advantage for me um, and a disadvantage. Um, and, you know, most people grow up in a house where it wasn't talked about at all, even if it was happening. 
Um, so I think, and you see that, you know, uh, we have s- such a stigmatized country and mental health crisis, but you also see a, a growing wave of mental health, um, you know, acceptance and talking about it, which is great, you know, especially among younger folks. <laughs> um, so I, I do think that when you can bring in all kinds of different people and not just people who are opting into the mental health side, it's, it can be not more powerful, but just different, you know, when it's like you bring in someone who, and especially bring in kind of like a lot of people who supposedly, and a lot of times do just like have their lives together, you know, they're doing well, um, on all the things that all the external factors, um, that, normal markers of society of having their lives together. But when they come in, they're like, well, maybe, yeah, I I need to reflect on my life and I'm actually really discontent or I have this kind of like substance use issue. Um, So yeah, that can, those, those can definitely be, be really powerful sort of um, things to see. One of the things that, that gets kind of, (laughs) it's hard to know how people interpret it always as counseling. Uh, I, I know how I felt about counseling for a long time till I actually got into it. And I know that you and I've had conversations about how counseling is this like amazing time when we're there a lot of times. And then we kind of walk out and we're like, well, shoot, now we got to get back to the rest of our life where nobody's going to want to talk about this amazing hour we just had. And there's also the barriers to counseling. There's There's all of these things, but why is it so difficult in in your mind to get people there to convince people even after you and I've gone through the the transformation of like is this like wizardry to yeah this is a like I need I have to get to this one hour of time why why is it so difficult to get there and I guess I want to hear from your end what moved you to get to counseling cuz I know for me I went the only reason I went is I finally had somebody who I really trust say, you need somebody who's going to actually like coach you on life. Cause like you're good at these other things, but you're kind of a disaster when it comes to your mental health and you need somebody to coach you. And those were words that I, as a coach, I understood, uh, as an athlete, I understood. And I was finally like, okay, I can look at it that way and that'll get me in the door. But why, why is it so difficult for people to get there? And what got you there? I mean, that's a loaded question, of course, because like we said, we see those statistics that 70% of people never seek treatment. It, it's 10 years to get treatment. Usually that first step of treatment is, yeah, go see a therapist. Um, and I think a lot of people are, you know, scared to see what they might unearth. It might get worse, you know, before it gets better. Um, I think people, yeah, I mean, ha- not having the time and not having the money is definitely a real thing. Um, I think the average therapy cost is yeah. like $180 an hour. You know, most of them don't take insurance. Um, it, it's a time commitment. We all are like hugely busy lives. It's an hour session, but you got to drive, you got to come back. Um, I've seen a lot of people even start therapy and then like, okay man, I don't know if that's sustainable to go just because of the time commitment or the cost. Um, And I do think I hear people say a lot, and I felt this too, well, I feel okay. Like, I don't want to just go and talk about all my problems um, and dive into the negative. Um, So, yeah. And I, I also do think, you know, there, there might be, and un, like therapy is not a magic bullet by any means. Like to me, it's a, it's, it's takes time. It takes effort on your own end for sure. Like going in once a week for an hour is just, it's not enough time to really do it in itself. Um, you know, it's like if you went and you were bike racing, but you only, you went to the, the bike trainer once a week and you didn't do anything else. Um, so 
I think sometimes people get in there and they're like, once they finally make it to therapy, you know, it's like a long journey just to get there for a lot of people. Like maybe your friends are nagging you, your, 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 your people are like, you need help. You need to get to therapy. Someone's reluctantly does. So they finally show up and they think, okay, I'm here. I've, I've done, I've done what I need to do. I showed up and it's like, well, that you're just sort of starting, right? Like you're just sort of starting yeah. the work and maybe that you find the therapist that's, that's not the right fit, you know? And it's like, ah, I'm not really driving with this person. How do you even know what the, like, what that means to set up a successful therapist relationship? Um, I, so I do think it's one of those things where there, there's still not a lot of education around that. Like what does a successful therapist relationship look like and how do you find one and do you interview different therapists and how do you know if it's going to work out? Um, these are questions that I don't know the answers to. And, and yeah, it takes time. It can take years sometimes and it takes implementation in your own life to confront those things. So, so anyway, that, I think that's some of the barriers to therapy that people don't go themselves. Um, me, I mean, I was a little bit opposite. I was like, in 2006, when this sort of my brain started malfunctioning and I was like severely depressed and just looking at the world, like my life is over. I'm sure of it. I was like, like last week I was good. I want to get back to feeling good and this is not right. And I want to address this problem that I think is a medical problem. So let me do what I know to do is like go to therapist and start from there. So I think that was a probably... Um, just because I had grown up in a family where my mother was in therapy all the time and had, um, mental health stuff. And just you had a baseline understanding or kind of a normalized understanding then of like what this should maybe look like because, because of the family past. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So how, how long, because I'm always, because I'm always curious, I, I, this is a question I love asking people who have gone to therapy, find it successful. It, it isn't a magic bullet. It takes time. Like you said, how long did it take you before you started to walk away and be like, man, I'm getting something out of this. Um, I mean, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I think when I was like acutely sort of in the midst of my depression, it was like those sessions were sort of just like an hour where I could feel a little bit of relief for whatever reason. And then I, really, I don't think I've ever had even like a light bulb moment in, in therapy, but it's just like over time, you're like, okay, that can, that kind of helped me reframe things help me, um, you know, just look at things a little bit different. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like cycling training. Like you start one training and it's really not going to do no single one is going to really do anything. It's just the, the totality of them all. Right. Um, but they all, I, I, it's like therapy. Like they say about cycling, like it's, you just feel better after you do it too. It's like a cathartic thing for me where it's like, I don't, I don't even know what just happened in that session, but I just feel lighter. I feel better when I leave. <laughs> but there are moments where I'm like, what did you, what, that was like a frustrating session. And I, I feel like it was somewhat, um, not wasted, but you know, I, I just, I think that at least for me in my experience, like therapy is great, but like having a realistic, like, portraying a realistic expectation to people that it's, so many things to so many different people that you're not going to walk in and like just start this perfect track to like healing. Um, yeah, I think it's important to like no, set people what... up with the right expectation, you know? Um, but for a lot of people, it's like their first foray into seeing any kind of mental health, um, having any kind of mental health presence in their life, you know? So it's like vastly important in that, in that regard, for sure, too. It's just like get your foot in the door and they can, these therapists can help you navigate different things.
songs. Yeah. So one of the problems right now in our, our country is that to get your foot in the door for a lot of people is impossible. Uh, you said the, the, the cost of what an appointment is. Uh, if it's 180 where you are, man, I would be doing cartwheels because I think it's around 300 uh, where I am for an hour of time. Uh, and that's that's just not feasible for people, whether it's um, a lot of insurance companies mm-hmm. still don't cover therapy. Uh, some employers are starting to build in um, a certain amount of days. Uh, and it, that's a step in the right direction. Uh, my, my own employer where I work, they added three days now where they will pay for it, but it's through a specific, um, it's only through one, you know, health cooperative. And, uh, and I always laugh that I'm like, man, three days is like nothing. Like you barely get to know the people, uh, and to determine yeah. like, is this a good fit or not? And so what, what did you, what have you started to do with Gopher Graham to address this issue? Because, you know, the conversations I've, I've had with you about this are really cool about, you know, your let's talk therapy program and, and fill us in on that. And what are you trying to do with that? Or what are you doing with that? Yeah. I mean, I think, like I said, like just getting like someone going through something and needs help, like we can go for Graham can kind of be that middleman and then we can connect you with, you know, a therapist who is generally a great first foot in the door to start. Like it's a great like starter for your mental health um, treatment and just maintenance really. So part of go for Graham and like when I started, it was like, okay, this is a clusterfuck to navigate like insurance companies even if you don't have insurance, like how do you find a therapist? Like there's Google and people have therapist profiles. How do you know if they're good, not? Um, and then, you know, you can't really ask your friends or family because like, that's like stigmatized. Like who you could ask your friend, what favorite restaurant is theirs, but you can't really be like, what therapist have you gone to? Even though, you know, so many people have seen therapists. <laughs> right. Um, and then, you know, it, it's, it could be different for different people. Like some therapists are, total new age woo woo, which really resonates with people. And some are like very like Western minded and that's going to resonate with people. So how do you like find a therapist, you know? Um, so that's part of what we started to do with our community and our G for G one oh ones is like, Hey, yeah, like you might have therapy in your insurance. You might have therapy with your, um, your EAP through your employer. Uh, these other free programs might exist in your community. If you're, um, low income or this or that. And here's the website. And it's like, okay, that's, that's, that's kind of good, but it's still like navigating through all this mud. So we were just like, okay, let's just like cut all that out and offer our own therapy program. So we sponsor, we partner with, um, a local group here in Colorado called Kessid wellness. And essentially you can just go directly to them and get therapy paid for by us and by the money that, you know, our ambassadors have raised and by the other, um, funds that have been given to us from, from other means. But, um, yeah, it's like, Hey, you want a therapist? Just call this number, fill out this form and you're good. Um, I mean, there are stipulations that's only in Colorado and a couple other States right now. Um, but their model is, is similar where they just charge, they don't work with insurance. They charge like a flat $7 fee for sessions. And so we just like have a scholarship program with them where people can just get free sessions through GopherGram. So that's pretty, yeah, we're pretty proud to offer that to basically anyone in the GopherGram community, anyone in the cycling um, world um, and people also too, who work work in the cycling world, work in the outdoor sports world, um, because that's, you know, there's a lot of different challenges there too. And we have partnered with different, um, businesses, um, in that realm and talk to their employees and like, how can we help support you guys? And I'm like, well, you know, we're not big enough to really have therapy, so you can just go straight through us. So that program's definitely been expanding and funding and, and scope. So we're pretty, pretty, 
stoked to be able to offer that. Yeah, that is all amazing. Uh, when you when you start to see the totality and the arms of what GoForGram is doing and what they offer, will how do people? Is it just people in Colorado that join this group or that are part of this group? And if not, how do people join? And then secondly, how can people give to what you guys are doing? And I, and I know that I will like I will have all the links uh, in the descriptions available for people, um, whether it's on YouTube or on the various podcast platforms. But talk us through how does who can join this? How do they join? And then how can people give to it? I mean, anyone can join. We are, you know, a community of, you know, mostly cyclists. We really, that community has really, you know, latched on to what we're doing, I think for a lot of different reasons. Um, But there are, you know, also outdoor athletes. There's a lot of crossover in cyclists too, but like runners, skiers, climbers. Um, But we really have, that's our community is outdoor sports and cycling. And we have people who want to, you know, start running. They want to run their first 5K to people who are, you know, pretty big time, um, at like semi-pro cyclists, you know, like um, Taylor Ledeen, Kelly McGelkey, some, you know, pretty hardcore athletes. So we have everything in between, you know. So if you want to be a mental health advocate and you want to use go for gram as that platform to um, help yourself, help others, be in our community, learn about mental health uh, resources. That's where the community uh, for you. And we're really only as good as our people in our community. So um, yeah, but how to do that? I mean, yeah, go to our website. There's a button on there that says join the movement. Um, You can also, Email me directly if you want, will at gophergram.org. Instagram, chat us. Um, we have, yeah, connect with us any any way you, you want. If you want to do a fundraiser, people do physical fundraisers where they're like, I'm biking across um, Colorado and want to like tell my mental health story and raise funds. You know, we do believe that storytelling is a huge um way to decrease stigma, build awareness, raise hope. So a lot of people will kind of like use that like, hey, I'm part of GoForGram. I've struggled with depression. I've never told me one. And here's my story. It can be hugely beneficial both for the storyteller and the people reading that. So um, stories, we're always looking for more people's stories. And I mean, I like to say everyone's got a mental health story and not everyone's willing to tell it to everyone on the internet. Of course, we get that. But if you are, um, that would be great. And then what was your other question? I think you wasn't. covered it, man. How can you join? Okay. Oh, how can people give? Like if there, is there a, a direct place on the website they can go to do that? Yeah. Same thing. Just direct on the website. Um, yeah, that's the easiest. You can also reach out to me if you want to do that some other way. Um, and yeah, we're, I mean, we are mostly in Colorado. I'm in Denver and Summit County, um, and we're just kind of all over Colorado these days. But we do have different sort of people and little communities popping up other places. Um, and we're definitely trying to support those in ways we can. You know, sometimes in Colorado, like I know the resources and the programs that people can tap into. Um and I don't know what's going on in Minnesota. So we're trying to work on ways to like create little, little chapter programs. Um, but either way, we definitely, when we have people all over the country right now that are sort of repping go for Graham and some people rep it as like their main cycling team. And some people just have the kit or the t-shirt and they're just kind of part of the community. So it's, it's, it's all that. Well, it, it is very uh, reminiscent of what actually mental health looks like in that it doesn't look the same for everybody. And it's, uh, it's, it is amazing and it is unique what you are doing, Will. And uh, I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing uh, with what you guys are doing and, and just having a, a real conversation about mental health with me here today. Yeah. Thank you, JP. Yeah, it's great. And yeah, I really appreciate um, the relationship we've got and especially just more people 
talking frankly about mental health. So thanks for being a mental health absolutely. advocate in, in your community for sure. So yeah, absolutely. Will Stingley, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. The Stable Cyclist Podcast is a twice-monthly podcast that focuses on bikes and mentality. And like today, when the situation is right, we will dive deep into mental health. If you want to find me over on social media, you can find me at The Stable Cyclist on Instagram as well as on YouTube. Thanks for joining us this week. And remember, you are loved.